I'm going to introduce Dave Bergslin. This is Jimmy with Font Lab, and uh, today is Practical Font Design. I'm not sure how many of you know Dave, but he has written several books, uh, probably to us, the most important being Practical Font Design with Font Lab 5. And, you know, doing this since the early days, like the first day Fontographer was made when I worked with Macromedia, I have gotten to meet a lot of font celebrities over the years. And I got to say, uh, I don't know if people would consider Dave a celebrity. He works under the radar, but with many, many moons uh, back in the 70s, being in the print publishing graphics business, he knows his stuff. I call him the grouchy old man who just says, I just want to cut to the chase and show you how to do it. So not a lot of fluffiness in Dave's uh, webinars. And he's got a lot of good stuff. I think rather than spending time bragging about it, you can go to his website and check it out. What is your website, Dave? Oh, uh, it's on. Uh, let me come here and share and I'll show you. Yeah, because there's a lot of goodies there that I wish I would have known when I first started. It's on bergsland.org, and then it's, it's all up here under the Hackberry Font Foundry, which is this page okay. here. And the actual book, I don't even know where it is now. Maybe it's here. Okay. Well, bergsland.org is close enough. Rather than uh, brag about Dave anymore, I'm just going to turn it over to him and let him take over the show and... Uh, if you'll notice the chat window, if you have any uh, emergency question, uh, I'm going to try to answer it. Otherwise, when we're finished, we are going to have a Q&A session. So here you go, Dave. Take it away. Okay. Hi. Glad to be here. And uh, we'll just go out to full screen and I'll lose any contact with any of you. But this and shut off your web webcam, Dave. Oh, I forgot. See, I always forget to do that. Here we go. That's off. There we go. Does that do it? You're so good. This is practical, <coughs> practical font design. This is who I am. Obviously, I look better there than I do on the camera on the, this morning. Of course, that's six years ago. But welcome to my world. Uh, this is the book he was talking about. This is the latest thing that I've done. And it was practical font design with Font Lab 5. And in the process of doing that, I designed a whole bunch of books for it and you got a link you can down if you want this you can download it as a PDF it's uh, one of the things that InDesign puts online and what I'm going to be what I was what the reason I did that book I did practical font design starting in 2009 and I was amazed at how popular it got and so they asked me to do a course on Udemy and I did a course on Udemy and in the process of doing that, I realized, oh, I'm doing a whole brand new workflow. So that's what I did. And so what I want to talk about is a simple procedure to begin your new font uh, without a plan. You can waste months or years of design time. I remember when I first got into Fontographer back in 1993, uh, I was drawing characters and I was doing this and I was doing all that. I didn't get a, get a font put together for at least two years. And uh, the first one was just absolutely got awful because I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm going to show you a basic setup. This I'm not saying my setup is the best. I'm just saying this is a setup you can use to get started. And a lot of this stuff is, is ridiculously simple stuff. How to get it named, how to get, get it arranged on your keyboard, on your screen, how to set it up with good font metrics. So if we're ready... What are the biggest problems when starting to build a font? Like I said, when I started, I just had bits and pieces and worried them to death and never really got anything going. But it's really much more practical than that. You need a place to work. So where do you start? What's important? And is there a specific design order when producing a font? I think there is. And, and I resisted that for years because being creative, I resist any kind of thing people tell me what to do, but there is a certain order of things that, that you really need to do something because you need a structure to get started. The problem with Font Lab is when you open a new font, you get something that looks like this, an untitled font, and there is nothing there. What looks like characters are a crude bitmap that even if you double click on it, to you'll actually then create a character and all you get is that crude bitmap in the background. You won't have anything that you can work with. And so I want to show you how to get around that. 
I want to give you a 10-step procedure to design your new font. And so you start out opening new font like I just showed you, and I'll show you again in a minute from the font menu. You fill out the font info dialog, and I'll show you the important stuff there as far as I'm concerned. You may have a lot more. You choose a font to use for your mask. The only reason that that's important is you can use that to generate your glyphs so that you actually have things that you can work from and you can go to, from character to character to character. You determine your letter spacing and I'll show you how to do that. I've got a really easy way to do that. I letter space as I go and I'll show you the tools how to do that. Make a special pieces com component that has a measuring device and, and where you can store your top serif, bottom serif, your legs, your crossbars, whatever you need. I also make weight balls so that you can keep the stems all the same and the crossbars all the same and the modulation all the same. Then you dry your caps, your numbers, your lowercase, and your accents. And once you got that, then you can automatically generate all the accented composite characters. Then you can add your open type features. I'll give you a file for both of those and I'll show you where the link is. And uh, there'll be a link here in this presentation. So you can go right there. You finish off all your miscellaneous characters. You kern it and generate the font. And I'll give you a file to help you kern it. So that's what I want to do. So let's do it. Naming the new font. Using Font Lab's Font Info dialog box. And choosing a font to use for a mask. So let's escape out of here. And we'll go to Font Lab. And here's a new font. There's a couple of different things you need to know. You see this little thing in the upper left-hand corner? If you get that up here, that top bar goes, but down here in the bottom, you'll get a couple things so that I can change the size of the characters. I like to get mine big enough so that I can see it. Then I click this, and you can use whatever encoding you want, and everybody's got their own. I started on Max, and I've been on Max all the time. I'm really comfortable with Mac Roman. It doesn't make any difference. Because once once it's saved, it works in any encoding. You just got to make sure you do all the characters. And then this is the font info dialog box. And so Dave, I'm going to show you a few. Excuse yeah, me, there. Dave. Your 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 screen is uh, lagging behind your audio. Where we're seeing a thing here says, "What are the biggest problems when starting to build a font?" Oh, okay. So yeah, we're so we're not. Are you uh, in Font Lab right now? I'm in Font Lab right now. Yeah. Yeah, so we need to get caught up on whatever screen you're looking at. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. Right now it says it's much more practical than that. You need a place to work. Okay. Okay, some people are saying that it's okay. So so go ahead. There Now I see the Font Lab screen. Go ahead, go for it. Okay. <laughs> and now I've turned it off. Can you? No, I'm not sharing it anymore, am I? See, you now, now we got confused. Can't have confusion. There we go. Are we all copacetic? Uh, it says it's loading the screen share. Okay. Yeah, let me know because obviously on my screen I can see it fine. So have you got Font Lab open? Looks like everybody's saying they're good. So seeing Font Lab there, I'll, I'll take it that most people are. So what I did is I came up, we'll come back here to the start. When you open a new font, this is what it looks like. And I usually come back here. I mean, when you first open it up, it's gonna look like this or possibly like this. And I always click it one more time to get the characters as big as possible so I can see them. And then I click this, and like I mentioned, I go to Mac OS encoding. You can go to whatever coding you want. And I choose name here in Mac OS, and then here's the font info dialog box. And again, stop me if we get some lagging behind. What you want to do right off the bat is you want to make some kind of font name. So we'll call this one Squark. And uh, we'll make it, oh, let's make it fat. And it's not going to be italic or bold. Well, that's a different show. And so this is fat. And we'll click build names. 
this will not work. Font Lab does it. But to be able to work on a PC when you sell your fonts, you're going to have to have a couple things. So I click here, I copy it, I double click here, and I paste here, and I paste here. But this one here, the full name, needs the hyphen. If you don't do it like that and you sell a font and somebody on the PC buys it, whoever sold the font, whether it's my fonts or fonts.com or yourself, is going to get a complaint right away. It don't work on my PC. So you really need to do it. The next thing that you want to do, and this is, you don't have to, although it works great on the Mac, I do that. I skip this entirely. It's really fancy. You can do all kinds of stuff. I got all kinds of help from Tordok and, and Finney and all kinds of people and everything they gave me didn't work. I never did get a font that, that would actually sell. The problem is trying to build a font family that has more than four styles in it. This is where you would get into that, but I've never been able to get it to work. So I come here and I say that it was created by me and I'll build the copyright thing and spark fat is a trademark of me uh, for embedding. Uh, if you don't allow everything, you're going to get complaints. And so you're just going to have to deal with that. You can do whatever you want, installable mode or embedding's not allowed, or, you know, you can be as restrictive as you want. But if you're selling them, you want everything allowed. Designer info, you're going to put your name, you're going to put your URL, you're going to put who sells it. My problem is I sell mine with my fonts and fonts.com and fontspring and, and two or three more. So for my vendor URL, I just put, put uh, uh, a page on my website there on bergson.org. License information. The common one now is, and the one that I use is, you can use this on any five computers that you own. That works for me. My problem is, is I don't want to have to deal with lawyers and all that stuff, so I just make it go easy. Then you come down to version, and you can click that. I always add this because it used to be there, and Fountain Lab doesn't do that anymore. And then I go to identification settings, and I make a true tab. True type unique record. I use Berg, B E R G, as my vendor code. I tried to get Microsoft to legally recognize it and they just ignored me. I mean, I'm a nobody. And then I click now and I've got that. And then the next thing that we're going to do, and this is where we go, and we're going to, I'll get off the demo now, is we're going to come in here and start setting up our key dimensions. And then I'm going to show you how to set up some overshoots. So, I'll click that and, oh, I was going to add a mask. I'm sorry. So let's come up here under tools and add the mask. Whoops, the sign font mask. I'll be okay. And the one that I wanted to use was uh, Diaconia Old Style. And I'll, I'll just, uh, well, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to click it and see what happens. Thought I did it. Maybe I didn't do it. I didn't have anything selected, did I? I'm an idiot. There we go. So now what it's doing is it's putting that in the background. And see, now what I've got when I open a font is I've got uh, the Acne Old Style in the background. And I may or may not use that. I can clear the mask now if I don't want to use it. But I'm just hitting Command, right bracket, left bracket, right bracket. And I can go through from font to font to font to font. You couldn't do that at all until you got these things done. And so that's why I, that's why I install a mask. And we'll, I'll show you in a little bit what I do with that. But what this does is it gives you characters. The only problem was is I had an open type pro font. And so what I'm going to want to do, see up here through the yellow, that's the ASCII characters. And I want to come down here, select all these, and delete them. Because I want to start out with just my ASCII characters. And we'll talk about that more in just a bit. So let's come back here and come back here and let me know if we got any latency. But this is what we've got to do next. We've got to determine our letter spacing. Do I want to use display or text? Do I want how tight or loose do I want it? The goal, like I said, is to letter space as you go. And so there's two basic types of letter spacing. And 
what you need is to decide are you going to do a display font which has much tighter spacing used at larger sizes usually 18 or more or are you going to do a text font that you can use for body copy these are from 9 to 12 normally and they need much looser spacing you can see the difference here on the last on the font that i did a couple of years ago for a previous version of of uh, practical font design Continu was the font that I did for that book. And you can see Continu Book Regular is a text font. But I was constantly wanting to do, use it as a headline, and I use it a lot. And so you can see that I made Continu Book Display. Uh, oh, come on. I made Continu Book Display. I adjusted the character shapes a little bit, made them a little bit more elegant, moved them together quite a bit so that I had something that I could use for headlines. So to get started with our letter spacing, we first have to distinguish three different types of glyphs. Those with perfectly vertical sides, like the I, uh, the H, the, you know, the right side of the D, the left side of the B, so on. Those with sloping sides, which would be like the A, the V, the W, possibly the M, depending upon your design. And those with curved sides, the O, the C, the G, and stuff like that. The basic idea is that sloping or curved sides introduce an additional white space. And as a result, they need to be drawn closer to the edge. That is, the side bearing needs to be reduced to skosh. The good news is, is that we can tell basically exactly what we need. Uh, Tom Finney recommended this book by Stephen Moy, a photographer a number of years ago. He had the, one of the best explanations I've seen of letter spacing and he got his from a guy named Walter Tracy but they came up with five basic measurements the side bearing of the H a little less than the H a little less than the H would be uh like on the right side of a, a lowercase n you don't really have a vertical wall you got one that curves away a little bit on the top and so you need to make that a little bit closer the half side bearing of the H would be maybe the right side of the C, the right side of the G. Uh, the side bearing of O, and that would be also the left side of the C, the left side of the G. And then a minimum side bearing, which I usually call no side bearing, which you use for the A and the V and the W, where you really don't have any side bearing at all. And so it works out like this. And this is something that I've developed over the years. And you can see I've got one set of figures for a display sans, one set for a display serif, and one set for text. And there you can see what the what the difference is between continu display and continu uh, text. Oh, my mouse isn't showing up on the screen. The, uh, the text was set with 120 units. The display serif version was set with 90 units. And so what do I do with this information? Well, We've I've got two charts for you, and they'll be here in the presentation. If you don't have it, ask Jimmy. I sent him a copy, and you're certainly welcome to a copy. <clears throat> for the capital letters, you plug in the numbers. Like on the A, five on both sides. Well, five is the minimum. So if I'm in a text weight font, I'm going to put 30 units on both sides. Uh, for the B, I'm going to put 120 on the left and 90 on the right. Oops. And excuse me. 60 on the right. And for C, I'm going to put 60 on the left and 75 on the right. And you just plug in those numbers. Well, I'll show you how to plug in the numbers in the middle. One of the things that, that Tracy never did was something for the minuscules. And this works fairly good for the minuscules. And you can see like on the, on the, uh, on the M, uh, we're set up to use a two on both sides. I tried using a, a one on the left side because seem, seemingly the, the left side is a vertical stem, but it always looks space too loose. And so these are just adjustments that I've come up with. You're gonna kind of have to come up with different things. If you have, you know, like if you have a crossbar that extends out the side of your, your E or something, uh, th but this will give you a really good starting place. And so how do I add these measurements? I have to make a special pieces component and set up a measuring device. And so I'm going to do a little thing here on, on a font that I called Argbach. We're into weird names today. 
And so we'll come back up here in Font Lab. We'll clear this out and don't save it. And we'll clear this out because that's what we use for the mask. And then we'll, here's Arcbach Medium. And so what you can see that I've done here, what I do is I find some characters that say I was going to do these and I'll mark them with red, blue, green, or, or whatever. This time I did blue, even though it looks like purple on my screen. And this is the numbers, the caps, the lowercase, and the accents that I want to deal with to add my composite characters. What I found is if I delete all these composite characters and just select them and hit the delete button, I have a much easier time of adding them. I mean, I can come back here, for example, and just double click them and it, and it comes together. But that to, to me, that just takes too much time. And so what I do is I just hit delete. You want to delete that glyph? Yeah. And since it's part of the ASCII thing, it doesn't go away. It just goes back to the back to the original. So what I'm going to do here is we want to make a measurement thing. The first thing that I'm going to do with that is I'm going to come under glyph. I'm going to go to generate glyphs and I'm going to make a glyph uh, and mark the new glyph and I'm going to call it LL. Why do I call it LL? I want something that's not a, not a character and I want something that I can type very easily in the add component dialog box. And since I, I'm left-handed and I run the mouse with my left hand, I want something that I can type very easily with the right hand. And so I get that. And here's, here's what I'm going to be using for my special pieces component and all that. First thing I do is I delete all that stuff because I don't want it. The next thing I do is we're going to come up here and I'm going to go to the cap I. And I'm, I'm just going to do really minor, really quick things here. You know, I've changed, changed the cap height a little bit. That's all I'm going to do to it. Then I'm going to use a tool on Font Lab that a lot of people don't, but I find extremely ha handy. And this is in the in the uh, paint toolbar. And I'm going to use a white rectangle, which means that I can just come down here and cut out the middle of this thing. Well, why the heck would I want to do that? Watch. I'm going to Command A. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to undo until I get my eye back. Then I'm going to come back down here, open up my double L, paste that in, and move it off to the left. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add component. And I just use your shortcut. I don't know what your, what your shortcut's going to be. And I don't even know where the thing is yet. It's command, command help. If you've got a help key, I don't have one. And so I, I set up something different, but I'm going to use my cap I now and oh, come on now. What did I do? I mistyped something. There it is. So I'm going to add that in. Notice I don't have any spacing here. It's still a mess, but we'll live with that. What I want to do now, since this is a component, I don't interact with it. So I can come up here and I'll go with a circle and a black circle on my paint toolbar. I'll enlarge this so that I can really see it. And then I'm going to come here, hold down the shift key, and do a circle that's the same width as the stem. OK? And just so that we can see what it is, I'm going to type 1 to get back to my uh, selection tool. Double click this so I got the whole thing. And I'm going to reverse the contour. So that you can see what this is and you can see what I've done is I've made a circle that's the width of the stem and I usually double click because it's easier to move and now I'll store this over here and now I've got the width of the stem for any character that I want to work on so if I, now I'm going to get this out of the way this is just the first thing we've done say I'm going to close this and I'll open up the lowercase l I'll do my component, type in LL, add that. And now what I've got here, see, I reversed it so it comes in white. I can measure this stem and get it exactly right. If I was going to widen it as, as wide as the, as the mask is or whatever, it just gives me a, a way to measure vertical stems.
handy little thing. So I'm going to de delete that. The next thing that I need is I need a measuring device. And I didn't bother to, to do a measuring device, so I'm going to steal one from another font. And uh, let's see, which one shall I steal it from? I'll steal it from the one that I did for, uh, let's see, there it is. This is what I'm calling my measurement device right here. This is, this is what it's going to end up like when we get done. But this is what I'm using for my measurement device. And what this is is a little thing that I drew that's all of these things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, are all 15 units wide. And they're all 30 units high, 15 units high, 15. This one is obviously off. But I only use it for horizontal measurements anyway. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to close that. And I'm going to come back to Argbok. And I'm going to open this. And I'm going to paste. Now, obviously, I've got some problems because they're overlapping. But let's come back here now. I'll deselect. Now I'm going to take this. And I just want to get this out of the way. OK, so that's as far as we've got now. How do I use that? OK, I'm going to come back up here now to my eye. And if you recall, I'm going to come back here and play for my cap eye. I wanted one on both sides. Well, one on both sides is 120 if this is a text white font following me so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here now in Font Lab, and I'm going to add my measurement device. And I'm going to put this right here on my origin line. And then I'm going to add this and move the left edge over to 120 units. Now, you don't do the serifs. Serifs, you do the stems. You got to make room for the serifs. But like uh, Moy said, uh, serifs are only used for confirming letter space that you don't make them so tight that they overlap. But all the letter spacing is done from the stem. So now we've got 120 on that side. We've got 120 on this side. Yeah. I'm just moving it with the arrow keys. And then I can take this one out to 120. And then I can delete this. What I commonly do, by the way, and I'll just show this to you, is I'll come here right now and add my LL. And then I'll immediately copy that. And then I'll start going through my font. And I will paste right bracket V, right holding down the command key. And I'll start adding them in all. What I'm trying to do here, one, I know I'm going to need them for all these things to get them set up. But also, I've got a really quick visual indicator now on all of these. You haven't done that one yet, dummy. You need to fix it. When I get a character done, and I'm assuming this one's done, I open this. I delete that out of the way. I close that. And I right-click, go to Mark, None. And then I save, and now you can see that out of all these characters, I've got I've got the and it, the the delete didn't show up. I thought I deleted it. I must have had two of them. Must have had three of them. We'll be all right. Okay, so now we'll save, and that's the basic process. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to add all my measurements to my caps to my lowercase. I'm going to make all my accents so that they're nicely centered. And uh, I don't even have to worry about the numbers. But I'll go through all of them and get all those things added so that they work. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here to make it easier for us. I think what I'll do is I'm going to come here on Librem. And I'm just, this is the one I did for my new book. And I'm just going to copy this and paste that into there. And I'll do the same thing with the lower case. Whoops, I'm sorry. I get going too fast here, and I need to slow down. There we go. And then I'll come back here to Libram again, 
and I'll copy my A to Z. Actually, I want the Grave to Z, and I'll copy that and go back here and go to the Grave to Z and paste that. And then the only other thing that I really need, whoops, I keep on hitting shortcuts and getting myself lost. There we go. Now we go to Librem. And the last thing that I want to add in here is I want to add my circumflex and through my Karen. <clears throat> I actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to start with my acute, hold on the command key, click this, click this, add the shift key and click this because you can do non-contiguous selection. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go in here to, and I'm going to do command, select, select, hold on the shift key, select, and paste. And so what I've got now, and notice I've got this dark line up here. That just means I haven't saved that character yet. It reminds me to hit command S. Now we're going to pretend that I've gone through this whole thing and I've adjusted the, uh, I've done the letters. One thing I need to go back on, though, is I want to start looking at this and seeing how things are set up here. And the key to that is I'm going to want to come in here to my ascender and my cap height. So here's my cap height. And you can see I've got this one wrong, and I can't remember what I use. I think I use 680. Yeah, it looks like about right. And uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll apply that and say it's okay. I'm retrofitting this, and so it's not going to be cool, but we'll do whatever we, whatever we can here. And now that I've got that one open, that's still not going to do the ascender, I don't think. Oh, it is. It is. It actually goes to a letter. And so I need to come here, and I think, let's see, it's 725. And it looks like I use 730. Okay. And for my descender, oh. Uh, I think I used 250, if I recall. Yeah, that looks right. And for my X height, I used, what, 420? Does that look like a good guess? Oh, not even close. 475, that's what I used. Okay, so now I've got my metric set up. Everything's based on a UPM of 1,000. The last thing that I do, and this is really weird, nobody does it, and it, it may just freak you out so bad that you can't stand it. But I hate hinting. I don't do that. Hinting is that thing that people on PCs need. And on a Mac, I don't. So what I do is I use this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use hinting to show me overshoot zones. And what do I mean by that? Let's click OK here. And I'll open up this one. See these blue lines here? That's what I've got set up now. So what I need to do is I need to remember what I've done here and change some of these numbers. But what I'm going to be adding is these blue lines. If you see here, I've got it called alignment zones. And it really helps to have the overshoots. So that's what I'm going to do here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here. And this, this causes some moving around, which is a little bit of a pain. But my ascender is 730. So if I go here, I want to change this from 720 to 730. And my cap height, whoops, my cap height is 680. So I want to check, do my cap height. And again, come down here and I want 680 to 690. I use 10 units for my overshoot. I used to use 15, but 10 seems to work a little bit better. And then my X height is 475. And so I'm going to come back here for my hinting and I'm going to do uh, 475 tab 485. And this one, I don't even know why that's there, so we'll get rid of it. That's my baseline. I got minus 10. And then for my descender, I use minus 250. So I'll come here and I'll set this at minus 250 and minus 240 okay so what does that do well when i open this up 
now you can see that the cap height's there. I've got room for an overshoot. So if I come and do my O, see how the top of the O fits the overshoots? Or if I come back here to see the the uh, bowl of my P goes up to the overshoot, but the serif doesn't. The Q fits the overshoots. <clears throat> the R does. Uh, and if we come back over here to uh, the lowercase, and I didn't do... <clears throat> Somehow it didn't accept my X height. So I'm going to come back here and we'll see what the heck I did. And oh, it's just a stupid typo. It's supposed to be 475 and 485, not 375 and 385. So now I'll come there and see now I got my overshoots on my lowercase. And if I come, uh, I'm just hitting command right bracket to go through them. Now you can see <clears throat> the descender fits down there and the P fits down there. My, my descenders are always short and because I like short descenders, but that's just me. But at least you get the idea now. So what I've got is I've got a bunch of letters here now where I've got my, my metrics. And if you want to do hinting later, then, you know, go back and do hinting the way you normally do hinting, but put your font together first. Because this, the, the overshoot thing will help you more than you can believe. It's just an automatic, <coughs> excuse me, an automatic, <coughs> sorry about that. It's an automatic way to help keep your font consistent. And that's the main thing I'm trying to do here is show you how to keep your font consistent. So let's go back here and we'll come here. And we've done this. We started with the I. The next thing I would do would be the O. And uh, uh, if you, you can ask me later if you want me to. But I do the, what I do with the O is I drop it. I fix it. I drop it in in my in my LL slot, and I do weight balls for the thickest modulation and for the thinnest modulation, and I set them off to the side. And then for the I would do the cap H, and I set up my crossbar the way I want it. And then I drop that into my into my LL, and I end up with uh, with uh, a weight ball for the cross for the crossbar. And so the result is, and I, I can show you that, and that would be a good thing, is I'll come here, and I'll go back to Librem, because there's no reason why I can't just take this and copy it, and come here and do that. So this is what you end up with for your measurement system. The only thing that's that's crucial about this thing, if you if you're looking, you see these little arrows here. I don't know if you can see them, and it, when you enlarge it, they get small again. So it doesn't do you any good. But you got a little arrow here, and what that does is it shows you path direction. What you're going to have to manually do when you get done with all that is you're going to have to select these three, or just come up here and select all those. And then you're going to have to come up here and reverse the paths. You want those four reversed. The reason that you want that, and let's come up here and show you that quickly. The reason that you want that is when you're when you're trying to adjust something here. Let's say that I was going to be doing, oh, let's do this one, which is an old one and it's really messed up. Okay, so what I want to do here is is I want to come up here and I want to make my, my move uh, or however it's pronounced. And you'll find that uh, in my new fonts, for example, I put a heifer in the move character because I don't know whoever uses that. But I'll copy this and then I'll do the right bracket and I'll drop in a lowercase, whoops, drop in a lowercase u. And then I will paste this in and get that where i want it which is about right there and then i will right click this to decompose it and then i will hit command f10 and um i'm not sure where that is it did it, it's to remove overlap but it's just command f10 and that'll it's basically the un, unify pathfinder and then I can come in here and drop in my LL 
and I know that on the left side it curves and so I'm going to do 90 on the left that's set up right but on the right it's set up very very wrong so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drag this out to probably 90 and I may try to do it the whole way out to 120 like it was a normal character my guess is is that's a bit much but that's how you just bring them in and use them if I needed a serif and I do need a serif here I would come in here now let me drop this back in again once I've got all this then I can decompose this and I can get this double click this double click this because these are just loose now we don't need them anymore and then what i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to take this and bring it well first of all i'm going to want to come come here i'm going to type three to get the knife tool i'm going to go across here type one to get the the selection tool double click that and delete it and then i can bring i'm sorry double click it and bring that in here Get that so that it goes up to the overshoot and then command f10 and i can add that together and then you're going to have see i got a double point here so i'm going to want to delete that i've got an extra point here so i'm going to want to delete that oh, another extra point probably an extra point there i don't need anything and then with the final thing that i do just to check everything is i hit command e for optimize and that came under the optimize command e happen to see that menu thing and what that does is it puts points at all the extrema and if you know anything about font design you know you want points at every extrema and the goal is is to try to eliminate all the points that aren't in an extrema sometimes you need them to keep the shape sometimes you don't my guess is i could probably delete this one see it didn't change it hardly at all and i've got an extra one here i don't know where the heck that one came from in fact i got several of them here so I'll delete that. You just go through and clean it up. You can enlarge it if you want. But then I've added the serif there. Obviously, I'm going to have to make a different flat serif for something like this. And uh, that's going to be, I'm not sure what I'd do with that. Probably what I'd do is uh, I'd take this bottom serif here and rotate it upside down. Or maybe use the top serif here. But it, to my eye right now, looking at the font today, these serifs are too wide for the lowercase u, but we're not going there today. This isn't a font design class. So let's go back to Keynote and take a look here. We did a quick demo of that. Now we want to add the accented composite characters. I'm going to give you the text to paste in the new Glyphs dialog. If you get this uh, Keynote, uh presentation or the powerpoint version and i don't know why my mouse isn't working here uh probably something to do with sharing it online but i can type this one and it'll go there i'm just going to have to go there but this link is active in the presentation supposedly it was before it is when i'm not on go to meeting or whatever whichever any meeting i guess we're in and so what that is is that is this one it's a link to this page and there's some useful pieces that i developed along with my practical font design and they're just here for you to use i've got a free base font for example that has the caps lowercase numbers and accents for serifs caps lowercase numbers for a sans serif but what we're looking at here is the glyph list so i'm going to click on the link that's going to download it and it's going to open up in text edit and i'm going to command it. this probably was it notepad that opens up on a pc and i'm going to cut that and just get rid of this because i don't like leaving stuff like that done and uh yeah it won't even let me close it oh there we go and so then i'm going to come back in here to font lab and i'm going to come here to add glyphs generate glyphs and i'm going to paste that in when you paste it in, you can see all the characters that I've got. I want to create glyphs because they don't exist. I want to replace any existing glyphs just in case I screwed up. And I want to mark them so I can find them. And I click OK. 
And that fast, I've added all the composited uh, accented characters. And if you've set up your accents right, you may have to modify things a little bit, but I can I can see looking at them, it's pretty good. I, I, I don't think I like this. So I would come over here and, and hit that over and, and center that because it's off center. <clears throat> you gotta go through and look at them, but that's all you gotta do is go through and look at them. Uh, the only other thing is now when you come here, like I can double click on the AE, I can open up the AE and what am I going to want to do to do this? Well, if you know me, you know, it's, I'm going to do something weird. So I'm going to decompose this. I'm going to select all. I'm going to double click it to get my transformation box. I'm going to slide it sideways. Holding down the command key goes a thousand units at a time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slant it backwards just a hair. Uh, holding down the shift key. I didn't want to do that. And so I'm going to do that like that. Whoops. And again, is this normal procedure? No, it's not normal procedure. What it is, is I find that all the AE uh, ligatures that I find, the A is, is messed up to the place where I can't hardly stand it. Uh, I mean, normally you'll take this and they'll take this and they'll skew this over until that's vertical. That drives me nuts. And so what I do is I try to get it pretty close here. And then I will come over here and get them on top of each other. And you can see I didn't rotate it quite right. And so then I'd come over here and double click to get out of the transform thing. And then I'm going to want to probably get rid of, let's see. I'm going to want to get rid of that. I'm going to want to click this and get this down below here. I'm going to want to get this down below here. Uh, I'm going to want to get this above and get this above. Whoops, no, I don't want to get that one above. That's the wrong one. It's this one I want to get above. And then I can come here and Command F10, make them one unit. Uh, then I can come up here, for example, and I can see that that doesn't quite line up with the, with the E, so I can move that up a little bit. And then I'm going to come here and move it over. How am I going to letter space this thing? I imagine at least several of you have figured this out already. Okay, I better undo that because I didn't select all. There we go. And so when I do my measurement thing here, What's the measurements going to be? It's going to be the minimum on the left and probably the minimum on the right. So I'm going to want to set this up for 30 units here. There we go. And then I'll come back over here to the right. And I usually do it from here down here because it just seems like I need to get it closer. But you you gradually get to to where you know what works for you and how you like it and that's how you're going to set it and then i set this up like that that character's done and i save it that's how we're going to go through all these but now that i've got these done what i want to do now is i is i want to finish up the ascii characters get all those ready because i'm going to need these pieces in in uh, other fonts and one of the things that i'm going to need to do and uh is because it just because i happen to know what i'm using for for my open type feature set is i'm going to have to oops excuse me i'm going to have to copy this come back here and come in here and add this and the reason i'm doing that is because in my open type feature set, I've got these are the tabular uh, lining and the open type features. I'm going to add a proportional lining. I'm going to add a tabular old style. I'm going to add a, a uh, proportional old style. I'm going to add a small cap figures. I'm going to add small caps. I'm going to add numerators, denominators. I don't even remember what it's in there. But once I've got all this done, and uh, probably the easiest way to do that is just assume we've got it all done. And I'll come back here to Libram 
and I'll save a, a junk copy on this one to the desktop so that I don't mess up my good font. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go zero and I'm going to get rid of all these. These are the ones we're going to be adding with the feature font. And so the next thing that I want to do, let's come back here and see where we are here. <clears throat> We've added the composite characters. And I demoed that a little bit. Now we want to add the open type features. It's at the same uh, page on the website, which is here. And what I want here is open type features. And there's three of them here. This is the one we're going to use. This is a display one because uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't find that I use in display. So I want to make it a little bit simpler. I can't remember what I got rid of. I think uh, it doesn't make any difference. The bold italics and italics. I can't remember the last time I used small caps and italics. Uh, the bold italic set drops the small caps, the numerators, the denominators, the swashes, the ordinals, some of the discretionary ligatures, just because italic hard enough to read anyway, and these things make things harder to read, so you don't normally do it. So I'm going to click here. That's going to download it. And there it is, 2010 features. And I'm just going to put it someplace where I can find it easy. So I'm just going to drop it over to the desktop. And then I'm going to come back here to my font. And I'm going to come here under window to panels to open type. And you can see I got a bunch of stuff here, which we don't want. So I'm going to, let's see, where is it? I want to reset features. Remove all open type data. Yep, I do. This is where you want to start. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and open features. Normally, when you open features, it's going to take you to your Font Lab application in the features folder. And you can see in my features folder here, I've got a ton of features that I've done. So I could add it from right here, although you can see I've got a bunch of different ones. What, what I'd probably do now is I'll add the the 2014 basic features, which is what I'm using today. Oh, it's the 2015 features. What the heck? That's what I'm using today. And if you want that, I can give that to you because what I've been trying to do is, is work it around so I'm doing more of an Adobe thing. But what I want to do now, and the reason I'm adding it at this point to an ASCII version of, of the font is that when I come up here and click Compile, see, there's the Compile button. I click Compile. I get this dialog. You're missing some features. Do you want to add them? Yes, I want to add them. And more than that, I want to add them with this feature file because what it does is it adds them in order so that you can find them easier, access them together. All your old styles will be together. All your old style proportional will be together and all that. So I just hit create. And looky what it did. All of a sudden now, when I close this and get back here, I've got my tabular old style. And see, I can fix that real easy. I mean, you guys know how to do that, I would assume. But if you don't, it's usually an end space wide. And so I could get that from the end dash, or I could be old style, and I could get it from my from my uh, end. And I can say, oh, look at that. That looks like it's 700. I'm not getting a number on that. Oh. Uh, I think I'm not sure, but anyway, it looks like it's seven, eight fifty maybe. I'll just do eight fifty. That's good enough. And so what I'm going to do here then, these are all set up. They're all designed. I'm just going to select these, and then I'm going to use another one, which is Command T. And I don't know how to find that. Uh, I think it's an action. That'll do. And what I want to do here now. Command T opens it up and I can have sets to load. I haven't done that lately, but I had a bunch of them in years past and I just don't use them anymore. What I want to do is I want to, uh, in the metrics, I want to set the side bearings. Actually, I want to set the width. Then I click here and I said we decided my lift, my width was. What did I say, 745? That's good enough. 
I want to center the character. I don't want to shift the mask layer and I run it. Now, when we come here and open up the O and obviously I went way too wide, but you get the procedure. Now they are tabular. They are all in the original thing. The problem is that's what they should have been. If you're doing it the way Adobe does it, and I hate doing that, but they set these up as tabular, the ones that are actually in the ASCII font. And as you can see, yeah, they are set up as tabular. So what these are then are the tabular old, oh, tabular old style. I don't know what TOS is anymore. But anyway, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come in here. Oh, I did command. I used an option backslash to get it. You just need to set up a shortcut that works with your dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so I use option backslash to get my add component. If you're right-handed and got your right hand on the mouse, you're going to want to come up with a shortcut that you can do with your with your left hand, like a, like a option two or something that you can do it. But anyway, we know how to set these things up now. I've got it here and these set up just like the letters. So I can come here We see when I do command A for all, I just get the characters. I don't get the component. So I can take this over to 30 and then I can take this one over to 30. Okay, and then I'll cut that. So that one's done. This one is going to be what? 120 on each side. This one's going to be probably 90 on the left and 90 on the right. This one's probably going to be 90 on the left and 60 on the right. This one's going to be probably 30 on each side. Actually, what, uh, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to go 120 from here and make this thing short enough so that 120, 120 clears it. And as you can see, 120 clears it pretty easy. So that's really not too hard. You can just come out here and make that 120 wide. On the other one, the four is going to almost touch. I'd probably make that 15. But as you can see, it's, it's very easy now to, to come through here and set these things up once you've got them set up from zero to nine, then I'm gonna come back here and let myself know that I did them. And I'm gonna go uh, and take off the the coloring. So now I know that any font that, that's, that's up here that is what has a white background has been completed, okay? And so let's go back here now and see where we go from there. Obviously, you just go through and do all those. Uh, the biggest problem you're going to have with them, by the way, and I should mention that, is it does the wrong thing because it's A small cap to 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 uh, C small cap. And so you're going to want to come up here, select your A, select your Z, copy it, come down here, select your A, select your Z, paste that in. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come up with something here that will take, and I usually at this point work with something like the H, and I'm going to want to Command T again, Command Option T. I'm going to want to come here and set up something that's going to make it the right size. Well, I can figure that out pretty good. I mean, this is, I'm going from uh, 580 to 475, and I can just go to my calc to my calculator and divide that out so that I get a percentage and I don't know what the percentage is, but we'll just set, let, let's, let's do it this way. And I'm going to come here and I want to scale and I want to come here and I probably want to proportionally scale, although you don't have to. And I'm just going to say for a first attempt that it's going to be 75% from the origin point. And then I'm going to just run it and see what happens. And see, that wasn't enough. So I undo. I hit Command-Shift-T. I click on here. I do 70. I run it. That looks pretty good. Some problems here, though. 
I assume that you guys can all see the problems. I've added guidelines here for how tall the serifs should be. When it's shrunk, it's shrunk the serifs too. Is that a hard problem? No, it's not a hard problem. I just highlight this, bang it up so that they get where they're supposed to. And you can see, since they're going a little bit below the baseline here, I want this a little bit below the baseline here. Now I've got serifs that match the, the, the regular caps. I'm going to want to do the same thing here and take this down. And this, this uh, measurement line, I didn't set up my guidelines here, and I should have. And so what I want to do is I want to come up here, and this is 475. If I want to come the width of my serif, which is about here. And what I'm going to do, actually, is instead of here, I'm going to go back up to one of these where I've got the thing set up that, like I want, and I'm going to come up here and make sure my guideline matches. And as you can see, it does. And then I'm also going to want to come up here and make sure that my guy, I put in serif guidelines for the top of the caps, the bottom of the caps, the, the uh, top of the A sender, the bottom of the D sender for the P and stuff like that, so that I can just have some idea uh, where those go and then make sure you lock them or you'll be moving them around all the time. Um, but anyway, we've got all that going. And when we come back down here now, see, I've got my H. The real problem comes when I come here and start doing this. And this is this is where this pieces glyph really comes in handy. Because what I came down with, and I can try to, I can try to, when I come here, there's all kinds of effects. I can do bold. Don't do it. When you do bold, it modifies the shape to the to the extent that you will spend more time filling out the shape and fixing up the shape than you will doing it by hand. By hand, what I mean is, I'm going to come here. This is my stem weight, right? And then I'm going to click this, and I'm going to pop that over there until that moves here. Then I'm going to take my two center serifs for my stem. I move that over 15, so I'm going to move this back seven. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite stem. Now here I got to decide, am I going to expand this or am I going to fill up the counters? Uh, I don't like Times New Roman, so I usually expand it. And so I'm going to come out here and do that. And then here's my crossbar measurement. And then I'm going to come here and get my crossbar. And now I've, now I've you know, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to put 120 on this side and put 120 on the other side. Uh, might as well do it, I guess. Put 120 here. Put 120 here. Delete that. Deselect it. Go down. Save it. And that one's done. Now, obviously, I should have marked all these, but I didn't. But what I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to take the I through the J, and I'm going to want to Command Shift T, get rid of this thing. I certainly don't want that, and run it. <clears throat> if you get my book, <clears throat> I've got several illustrations of what you get. You you find yourself producing little, tiny little two point three point shapes that are stuck inside your characters that you can't really see that put little holes in your characters that you certainly don't want. So I'm going to come here and yes, I'm going to fix every single one of these by hand. Yes, that's going to take some time, but it's not going to take near as much time as using the bold effect. I find that I can uh, adjust these to the proper weight and the proper thickness <clears throat> and do the lower, the small cap A through Z probably in about eight to 12 hours worth of work. So we're just talking a day and a half if you're working on it full time. If you're not working on it full time, you're still going to have eight or 12 hours. So that being done, we've done this. We're going to come here and roughly demo that. I need to finish off all the characters. They're almost all built with the, with the, with the LL glyph or pieces of existing characters, there's very few you have to draw from scratch. And then finally you kern and generate the font. 
I have another piece that you're going to want to have for the kerning. So let me show you that. And it's another one that I offer on that same page. When we come in here and we'll just say that I'm ready to kern it. I'm not, but we'll just say that we are. And you come down here to the new metrics window. One of the problems you're going to have is whatever you select comes up here and you want, you want something in here like this, where you can go through everything and check everything. So like if I was going to come here, I, I usually start here and this is kerning. We'll just start with metrics and then I can do command page down. I think, let's see what I do here. And I can just, there's my A through my Z. There's my numbers. There's, uh, this is old saw figures. There's my lower case. There's a couple of weird letters. There's a couple more le weird letters. There's my small caps. You can see only the H is fixed. And then I've got this one and this one. And then I've got all the standard kerning pairs that you're going to have to worry about. What you find is you want to add real words in there every once in a while just so that you can keep in your own mind how you're kerning this. I don't know about you guys, but when I kern, I tend to get it tighter and tighter and tighter. I'm a child of the 80s. I learned kerning and, and typography in, in the late 70s, early 1980s. And those of you who were around are aware of the style at that point, which was to do the letter spacing so tight that the letters almost touch. It was unreadable, but we were all convinced back then that it was gorgeous. And the result of that is, is when I start messing around with my letter spacing, and if I find something here that I don't like, by the way, uh, like say here on the R, it looks like there's a little bit too much space on the right side of the R. You just double click it and drag this back here and close it back down. And that fixes the letter spacing on the R. And you can go, you can do that with all of them. It's just command page up, command page down. You are going to need a, a extended keyboard like you always do. You want to do anything serious in graphic design, you need an extended keyboard. But see, you can look here and basically really rough, but it's all there. In this particular one, I don't have any kerning pairs yet or anything like that. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come here and come back up here. Let's get get this one where we got a kern. Here I've got some kerning pairs. And you can see right here, and what you do is Oh, let's see. What am I doing here? Let's see if it'll work. There we go. I've kerned it minus 40. I've kerned it together. You can see, and here I'm just going to hit page down to go this way, page up to go this way, end to go to the back end, home to go to the front end. And I can see right here, for example, that the A and W the W and A seems to be a little bit farther apart than everybody else. So I either go one unit at a time with the arrow key or I hold on the shift and I go 10 units at a time. Or I hold down the command and I go 100 units at a time. And you can just do it with keyboard shortcuts really, really fast. I mean, that's too close. It's I'm looking at the AG over there and it looks like it's more about like that. And you can see that's minus 100. So if I was to come up here and this is where I usually start is I reset the kerning and get rid of all the kerning pairs, delete all pairs. Then I'm going to come back here and my WA is just, oh, come on now, get in here again. It's just 100. And then I page up, and that's going to be 100. Page down. This is probably going to start at 100. That looks a little tight. So I'll take it out to, to 90. Page down. That looks. And But the main thing here is, and I'm just going to go through so you can see what we got. I got to come back down here. I've got... What I found over the years, all the kerning pairs that I commonly needed to know, including, they're not showing up because I haven't done it yet, but like here, you see up here where I've got the, the bracket CK, 
that's going to show the ligature of the CK. So I can do the corning, kerning to that ligature. The problem with this font is I don't have any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this and I'm going to close this and not save it. And I'm going to open this and we'll come back up here and then we'll come here to a new metrics window and we'll come back here to an AV and See now there now everything's showing up. And I'll get down here where we have. Oh, here's one. There's one of the problems you're gonna have is if I just type it up here, there's no way to type a curly quote. So I have to type slash quote double right. That's the close double quote. And a slash quote right. And because I find that I always need pretty heavy kerning between my curly quotes and and uh, other things. I was going to come back here. I think this font has several other. The there we go. Like I've got a I've got a ligature of the W A, and so I've got to find I've got to get all those right, and then I've got a uh, oh I got a, a ligature of the double B. And I got a ligature of the double G. And those are all in this font. This thing I'll get you. If you don't want to use them, they don't show up if they're not in the font. If they bug you, delete them and save it. And what you do is you just uh, come here and you can either edit it here or you can copy it out of here and paste it into Notepad or paste it into Text Edit and edit each line as you want it with a return between the lines and save it and then paste it back in here. Once you paste it back in here, that becomes the text file you're going to use. Looking you... good, Dave. Yeah. Looking good. Uh, I think we've got some questions waiting. Uh, I don't know. Oh, we ran out of time, didn't we? Yeah. You were on a roll, so I hate to stop you. There's um, the current file if you want it. Well, okay. I was going to say, uh, one of the questions was, do you do class kerning? I had yeah I I've I've gotten in the habit of just hitting uh, classifications and uh, accepting what they do. I go through and edit it a little bit, but I don't worry about it too much. Uh, and see, I you can tell how much I do it because I can't even find the there it is classes. And what I usually do here is I just generate classes. And I generate all, and uh, I basically usually just take the defaults and go with that. The problem is when I start looking through this, I can immediately start nitpicking this sucker to death because there's a bunch of things. Why is a zero slash with the lowercase and the uppercase U? I don't have a clue. They shouldn't be. And so what I do is I'll come here and delete that, delete that, delete that. And I will sometimes clean up the classes, but mostly I don't. And what I'm going by is just a simple practical matter. Does anybody care? How do I define, does anybody care? I define it by, do I get any complaints from my, from my people that buy my fonts? If I get a complaint, I fix it. I've never had a complaint on that. Missed how to load kerning pairs. Okay. Just saw that one. You come up here, you go to new metrics window, and you get that text font. You see this thing way over on the right? You click that. This is going to be empty. You take that text file that I just showed you on this page, current 211 text, and then you come back here and you paste it in. And you click OK. Once you click it in OK, then it's added over here. OK. And you can just scroll up and down. And you get from one to the other. Oh, by the way, at the very end, which I never did, I took a piece of one of my novels and I did just the uh, uh, some copy out of a novel so that I get some kind of feel of how this looks in real text. And I found that really helped my kerning and got my letters face 
better is once I've gone through all those crooning pairs up on top, now I go through a whole bunch of text and just start looking here and saying, okay, anything here that really looks bad. And if I find something that really looks bad, like I don't like this RNA, it's too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to, uh, oh, that's way too far, probably about 20. And now that's changed for the whole file. Because any kerning that I do anywhere in here is changed for the whole file. So I just use this to, to double check my kerning and I've got, it's a strange little story. And so if you want to want the, you know, again, paste your own in if you don't like mine. But the idea is to get something here that you can use to test your kerning. And notice that even in here, look at that. There's a quote double right. Why would I want that there? Because I want to, I, I don't want a, a, a footmark there. And you can see here, I need some kerning there. There's no doubt I need some kerning there. And so I'm going to take that over there like that. And so I do kerning down in here, and this is one of the places where I start adding my 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 curly quotes and stuff like that 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 need to be need to be kerned in letter space as much as everything else and are commonly forgotten. Anything else? Dave, what about expanded text in the kerning window there? Which one? Which one are you talking Somebody about? Somebody has a question here, John. If you look in the in the chat window, he says he's using expanded text with his kerning pairs. What do you mean expanded text? Well, I'm I'm expecting that he means a little more white space. Well, you're gonna, the the more white space is going to come in when you when you put the letter space in as you go. And is text expander something that just adds tracking or something? Must thanks, be. Anna. Yeah, thanks, I've never Anna. used the idea. I've never used it. Okay. Well, we'll officially declare open season on any more questions. Yeah, I don't have you to on, go. You were on a roll and we hated to interrupt you. Yeah, well, obviously I lost track of time. This is something that, that that I find real fun to do, you know. Okay, well, going once, going twice on, on some more questions. Where can you get the link for the file? If you get the presentation, and Jimmy should have a, uh, a link for the presentation, it's right here. And it's here about four places. It's here on the Kern. It's here on the on the uh, add open type features. It's all the same link right down here, and that's it. Bergson.org, Hackberry Font Foundry, Fonts, Supplied Pieces, Practical Font Design. And they're all on that one page. And if you can't remember that, the easiest thing is just to come back up here, and you'll come in on the home page of Bergson.org. And it's up here under Hackberry Font Foundry, Font Design Supplied Pieces. Wow, somebody already put the link in the chat window. Way to go there. Good. Good. Thanks, Ben. All right. Let's see. Matt is asking, now that you've completed, completed the font, is there anything to add about saving it for use? Actually, once I get once I get it current like that, I just export it as an OTF file. Uh, my field is book design, and, and I do a lot of book design, and so I just export it, load it in, and start using it in my books and see if it works. And I'll use it for a month or two before I release it, because I'll find things. You know, I'll be looking and saying that R is off center. I got to fix that, and I'll go back and fix it. And so uh, there's not the Nothing helps more than just exporting the font and loading it in your system. If, you, if you've if you got uh, got a Mac that, as you know, that's extremely simple. You just open up uh, font book and, and add it and uh, just use it. And, well, Dave, Dave, I'm yeah. wondering if maybe Matt is asking about how he's going to generate the font. Maybe he can explain, but maybe you oh. might want to show us some of your favorite 
tricks for when you go to the file generate? Oh, my favorite tricks. Okay. Here's my favorite trick. Seem to have so many doggone tricks, you know. Here's my favorite trick. I go to generate font. I use the defaults. I use open type postscript and I save. That's pretty tricky. That's real tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, was there something else you were uh, wanting to know about generating the font? I know that when you get up here and you get into true type specific settings and postscript specific settings, you can get things that radically change how your fonts are generated. My experience has been to go back to the defaults and just use what Font Lab does and it works fine. If you start messing with them, maybe you're a guy that likes coding or a gal. Maybe, maybe you're a woman or a man that likes coding. I hate it. It's not that I can't do it. It puts me to sleep. I, I've taken several coding courses and I'd be reading the book and I'd fall asleep while I was reading it. Not because it was difficult, but because for me, it was boring. And I realize there's probably a number of you that do coding. And if you do, you can get in and you can control a lot of stuff. And I used to play around with that. But what I found is that when I started playing around with how it saved the fonts, I very quickly got into something that was a real mess. But that's yep. just me. <laughs> yep. All you got to do is leave one semicolon off and you're toast. Yeah, I, I, I hate coding. I, I, and you'll find my book. And I probably should show you the book. If we get down here to the last page. Right here, you got a link there and that'll take you. And again, it's the same, it's the same website. If, if you read my book, it's the same thing, basically. When I was teaching this stuff, uh, the book is a transcribed lec lecture, and it's a lot of it's stream of conscious. My goal, like I was doing today, is just to let you watch me and say, oh, I could do that, but I didn't like the way he did that. I'll do it this way. I'm not claiming I have the right way. I'm just claiming I have a way, and it works really well for me, and it's worked well for other people. But a lot of you are going to have to say, oh, that's how he did it, but I want to change it because I don't like it. That is cool. There's no, nothing wrong with that at all. I'm just trying to give you a feel for how do you put a font together efficiently. Wonderful. I appreciate it, David, because like I said, I've interviewed a lot of celebrities and they would kind of feel like, uh, I don't know how to say it. They, they would be like, why do I have to go over these mundane things with you? You should know all that. And let's just talk about the finer points and so you really do get down to the nuts and bolts well and see that's been my whole career i do the same thing when i teach book design or teach I for 20 years i taught digital publishing in a community college and what i found was that nobody in the industry was teaching everything practical they all just assumed you knew it exactly and so my courses are built entirely on Here's a practical way to do it. Here's the terminology. They're going to try to trip you up and laugh at you. So the, here's what this word means, you know. And Well, there are a few people, I won't say all of them, but there's one or two that live on this earth who would feel like, I don't want to tell everybody all my secrets. Well, freely you've been given, freely received, you know. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I see you're getting a standing ovation there in the chat window, Dave. You know, thanks, guys. I, I hope it was helpful. If it's not, go to my website and click the contact button and ask me questions. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Okay. I've also got the same course on Udemy. Oh, can you give us a link to that course on Udemy? Uh, probably. So I'm going to assume that all the chat is just thank you, thank you, thank you. No more questions. There, there's the course on you, Udemy. And, not, uh, okay, there it is. You want to copy paste that link into the chat window? Oh, yeah, I can, can do you that. right click on that? There you go. Uh, type my message here. And I don't know if the stuff after the last slash is necessary or not. Okay.
my guess is you can delete everything up to, up to the end on design and it will probably work. Uh, Carolyn is asking, what about your upcoming book? Which upcoming book? I'm not sure. Is the InDesign one is already finished? Yeah, the InDesign one's finished. And the uh, font design one's finished. Right now, what I'm doing is starting to teach myself Font Lab 6 because I'm going to have to have, oh, there's several versions. Yeah, and the one that you want to get is you want to get practical font design with, in, with Font Lab 5. That's the most recent one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should I should have said that. Yes, and speaking of FontLab 6, uh, some of you may want to go to FontLab.com and keep scrolling down the bottom, and you'll see the link for the pre-release copy of FontLab 6, and you can start playing with that. And if you go to the website, you can click here if you want if you like eBooks, and this will give you an archive that has a PDF and a, and a EPUB FXL of it, and uh, that's. The EPUBs are ten bucks. I don't even know what the print print variety is. I haven't checked recently. Well, if I had it to start over again uh, in life, Dave, I would have checked with you first because I seem to have learned everything the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. That's yeah. that's why I, that that was my main thing for for wanting to. Oh, well, let's see, the new one isn't showing up. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to guess that there's no more questions. So going once, going twice. And there will be a video link that will be automatically sent to everybody. And you can also, if you have a question or you feel like you didn't get something that you wanted, you can email me, jim at fontlab.com. So let's just say a big thanks and... Everybody go have a coffee and chill out now. Have a great day. Okay, we'll see you next time. I'm closing it down. Bye-bye. Okay.